Are you having some really serious issues with your boxer because they're resource guarding and you're not really sure how to deal with it? Well, today's the video for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Boxer Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the boxer and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. Having your boxer resource guard in the home is a worrying thing, especially if you've got little kids around. So today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that the canine behaviorist and founder of FenwayCanineLeaders.com, Will, has recorded all about dogs that are resource guarding and how to deal with that situation. So over to you, Will. So in this quick fire webinar, let's talk about resource guarding. Now, if you're interested in potentially moving into a career as a canine behaviorist, or you're an owner that has a dog that is suffering from resource guarding, it is an incredibly difficult behavior to find a way to address, overcome, and move forward from. And like I say, if you're going to go into the realms of working in this field and helping clients with those difficulties, you are going to find that resource guarding is going to be a very common behavior problem that you're going to have to be addressing. Now, these mini webinars aren't designed to go into depth of modification and rehabilitation programs for these quite complex canine behaviours. Now, when it comes to resource guarding, I could do week-long seminars dedicated to resource guarding alone. So, what I'm going to try and do is condense all of that down into a few minutes to give you the 30,000 feet view of this kind of problem. Now, for me, resource guarding is absolutely the canary down the mine of much bigger problems that are either already happening or are going to happen. And it's one of those things I like to get on top of as quickly as possible the second resource guarding starts to become an issue. Now, if you've been around Fenrir for any amount of time or seen any of our training principles, theories, or methodologies, you'll understand that the number one priority that we always discuss is around calm consistent leadership from yourself as the canine owner to build that wonderful relationship with your dog that then opens up communication pathways. Resource guarding for me is a very clear indicator that that calm consistent leadership is not there. A dog in a loving trusting relationship with an owner who it impeccably sees as its calm consistent leader would not dare envision to guard any of his resources because that dog would more than understand that those resources belong to it its calm, consistent leader. And in order to gain access to those valuable resources that it deems worthy of guarding, what it actually needs to do is sit, be calm, patient, well-mannered, and display desirable behaviors. And that is how they gain access to those desirable items that they deem it necessary to guard in the first place. Then building up on top of that relationship and that very clear understanding from the canine psychological point of view, they would then never dream of guarding that from their leader. And if their leader came in and decided that they wanted to take that food or that toy or that comfortable place on the sofa, they would have absolutely no issues in giving up that resource to their leader. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going into the realms of dominance and that we need to beat our dogs into submission to achieve that by no means whatsoever but a dog that doesn't resource guard is a dog that has a relationship built on trust and leadership from its owner that will be a relationship based on love and calm consistent guidance from its owner an owner who knows how to be a calm consistent leader and who can enforce those rules, boundaries, and expectations implicitly. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world, and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just wanna be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you so there'll be links down in the description box for both of our instagram pages i'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there now, when it comes to resource guarding, there is a few behavior modification or rehabilitation things that we can come in and do some quite quick um 
kind of corrections and modifications of those behaviours, but it doesn't really address the root cause of where the behaviour comes from. Now, with some of the cases that I work on, we might be looking at a dog that is due for euthanasia that day. So we have to jump straight in and be able to correct those behaviours quite quickly. When we're working with owners that are facing resource guarding as a problem, we usually have more time. Now, that is why I developed my boot camp programme. The boot camp programme has been used by thousands of people now and is used for a wide variety of different behavior problems because it's built on the foundation of being able to help the leader become a high level canine leader or the owner sorry to become a high level canine leader restructure that relationship with their dog to then be able to open up those communication pathways that have been missing so they haven't been able to tell the dog what they do want nor what they don't want from the dog and in this case resource guarding so i always think that absolutely the priority to fix resource guarding is around restructuring the relationship now again we can talk for hours and days on that topic alone um but if you are interested there will be a link down to my boot camp program in the description box below so if you're struggling with resource guarding i highly advise that you check out that and put your emphasis on first of all becoming a high level canine leader yourself or helping your client to become a high level canine leader restructure that relationship with the dog and once you achieve that then you'll find that nine times out of ten resource guarding will just disappear on its own and for that one time out of ten that's left you have a much much better communication pathway where you can very quickly easily uh, and without severe physical corrections you can address resource guarding and make it very clear to your dog that that is not an acceptable behavior you can then redirect them to the desired acceptable behavior of sitting quietly with good manners waiting to gain access to that resource rather than trying to guard it in the first place and you'll quickly have a dog that seeks to display those desirable behaviors rather than the undesirable ones. So that was a very quick fire breakdown of resource guarding to give you, like I say, that 30,000 feet overview of the topic. Um, in some of our other projects, we're going to go into much, much, much more detail of the intricacies and the finesse of resource guarding. But if you have it yourself or a client does, it's that canary down the mine. It's that initial warning sign that there is a problem with the relationship and that must be addressed through restraint structuring the relationship by first of all becoming a calm consistent leader so i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you found it helpful there you have it guys some really useful tips and tricks that you can start putting into practice with your very own boxer if they're resource guarding i really hope you enjoyed today's video if so get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming here every single week so i can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Boxer Show.